everyone, welcome to the program. This is Sunday Politics, live on China's television. I'm Sean Okimbalo in Abuja. Happy Easter to you all, whatever you may be watching. Tonight, we shall be exploring the intersections of faith, governance, and community in our program. And we're looking at our nation and the next step. Tonight, we shall be... Uh, speaking with Bishop Matthew Kuka on one hand, and also we shall also be speaking with the Honorable Minister for Works, Engineer Dave Umai. Tonight seems to be a double barrel kind of package for you. It's an Easter Sunday. What else can we do than to bring you <laughs> a very well packed program? Tonight, we're speaking first with the former governor of Ebony State and the Minister of Works, Mr. Dave Umai on the infrastructure agenda of the Tinobu government and recent development in that sector in our nation. Mr. Dave Umayi is live for us virtually from his hometown in Ebony State. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight on the program. Okay, thank you very much. And happy Easter to you and happy Easter to Nigeria. Thank you so much. Happy Easter to you too. Uh, I was almost saying Pastor Dave Umayi, but because I'm speaking to you uh, as uh, as minister, let's leave it at uh, the minister of works. <laughs> All right, let's begin our conversation tonight. Uh, although we are uh, we are in the Easter mode, uh, but there are some those who are already reacting to some of the infrastructure uh, stories that we are hearing. First is the Lagos Calabar Coastal Expressway uh, that uh, has brought some conversation up as to the significance and the benefit of that kind of road. How far uh, uh, has work gone? This is about 700 kilometers of road, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, what are you asking specifically? How far is the extent of work? I know that the committees from the House and the Senate, they, they went on uh, a tour with you on that project. What update can you okay. give us? What is the extent of work? Well, um, the, the road, like you rightly said, is 700 kilometers on that phase one, and it's uh, Lagos uh, down to uh, Calabar, uh, coastal road. Uh, the road is uh, quite a very unique one in the entire Africa. The road is uh, of 10 lanes, five lanes on uh, either side and the middle, we have the five meter, you know, provision for, you know, rail line. And uh, so the rail line and this road, uh, uh, we intend to complete it within eight years of it, Mr. President's administration. You ask the importance of this road. The importance of this road, uh, it is difficult to explain it uh, just in one race. But this road is passing from uh, Lagos through uh, nine states, the coastal states, you know, down to uh, Cross River. And this is phase one. The phase two is to link up with the uh, African trans Ara route from Ogoja, you know, down to Cameroon. Uh, the phase two is to link up with uh, the Badagri Sokoto route uh, that I intend to procure uh, under the new infrastructure, the new job of Mr. President. So you can see that the entire country uh, is, will be tied together under this kind of uh, super highway. But I can say it's the first of its kind in Africa. And so what are the benefits? The benefits are enormous. You know, apart from the fact that uh, you can do from uh, Lagos down to uh, Cross River within seven hours, seven hours, in a moderate of 100 kilometers per hour, you also have a rail line. Then Mr. President directed for, to, uh, uh, to have a quick return on investment that we should liaise with states, this coastal state, the nine coastal state, and procure uh, land along the corridor of this uh, project so that we can develop you know, infrastructure like tourism, you know, factories, industries, estates, and so on and so forth. And so you can see that in each state it is passing, there will be a linkage to the existing uh, you know, roads in each of the states. So it's going to tie the entire country together. Uh, even the Lagos Abuja Superhighway that we intend to do, Lagos Abuja, when that is done within five hours, 
you can see that that is also tied together. So this road, people view it as just, uh, you know, uh, tie the coach that stays together. No, it tied the entire country together. Let me, let me begin by asking, when you say eight years of this administration, uh, there are those who will say they only voted for President Tunubu for an initial four years. And the president has also said, look, if, uh, if any politicians perform, uh, they should re vote them in or out. So when you say eight years of this uh, president, one will wonder that it's only four years that he bargained for and is renewable. So uh, that's on one hand. But what is going to be interesting is to know that I know you are an advocate of the concrete technology. So, and Costa, for a lot of Nigerians, uh, for, for the benefit of those who are not familiar with this kind of project, Costa means that it's along the water uh, bodies. So it's, it's more or less going to be a different kind of construction. Give us an understanding of how much this will cost and whether or not you are using the cement technology. Uh, Jay, let, let me first tell you that uh, um, you call me a pastor. I'm also a prophet, and uh, um, you must know that uh, the coming on board of Mr. President is divine. And uh, when God starts a thing, he completes it. So I strongly believe, and uh, I'm persuaded to let you know that God told me that this administration will last eight years, and uh, because uh, this administration is born of God, and you can see the miracles that uh, uh, Mr. President is doing through the inspiration of God Almighty who brought him to right all the wrongs and reset this country. So we take him back this country, we will give him back this country to Nigerians, and that's simply what Mr. President has come to do. And so we are just there to support him. Uh, the uh, question you're asking about the, the, the concrete technology, I'm very happy that the National Assembly members, you know, there were, uh, some of them were very critical of, uh, you know, the, 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 the technology of uh, concrete. And uh, I took them to what high tech. And for me, high tech has come to be the number one, you know, construction company in Nigeria. And uh, you can take me on that, you know, we, we can debate it and I will prove it. If you go to the... Uh, Even above the, the likes of Julius Baja, the likes of uh, um, Julius Baja and the rest. I, tell, I mean, what gives you what? I uh, say I'm a you know a fellow of Nigeria Society of Engineers. Uh, I'm uh, the engineering is uh, part of me. I'm part of me, and uh, I've been on the saddle, you know, uh, knowing who is doing what. I reckon the company that will do a road and it will not fail within 15, 20, 30, 50 years, and that's simply what. Uh, you know, um, high tech is doing with uh, Dangote on task credit. And so this one, having performed, you know, Lagos, we went through there. The National Assembly members, they saw it. We went into the deep sea port, all done on concrete reinforcement. In fact, they say we were making decking, you know, on top of roads. So the concrete road technology has come to stay. And let me say that who started all this concrete thing is Mr. President. When you go to VI, where he was governor, you can see that. All the roads in VI, and even up to today, they were all paved with uh, interlocking ties. It's a kind of concrete technology. And so I drew my inspiration from him, and he has given me all the support to continue to insist that when a road is done, it should be able to last for 50 years. Now, tell me, apart from high tech, who else has done a road in this country and it can last for 50 years? So the, the, the National Assembly members are very, very excited about this coastal road about the use of concrete to do our roads. They went through the roads that have been done by ITEC and they could not see one single, single crack or through. But you will recall, Shehu, that you know, over the years, this uh, Papa Ushuri has defined all kinds of construction methods and solutions. But today, you, we are witnesses to you know, a very wonderful concrete pavement that we all support. And you go to deep sea port, you will see the same thing. And so they have started the coastal road, and uh, people were criticizing me and say I left the likes of this and that and this. I said, look, I'm an engineer. I'm not a historian or a literature person. You know, I understand engineering. I love engineering. I love, you know, constructing roads. And so they said, you said high tech at 1.3 kilometers per centimeter. 
as I talk to you, they have done over five kilometers of some filling. They have started the real reinforced concrete works. I was amazed. They said 36 months, but I'm going to beat us hands down. I'll be surprised if that road is not done. The first section of this one is not done within uh, 24 months. So, so uh, uh, Minister, from, from what section to what section will be ready at the first phase? From Lagos to where? Okay. Now, the, 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 we have two phases of the project. The first phase is Lagos to uh, uh, Calabar, 700 kilometers. And then you have the phase two, which is to S4. We call it S4. Uh, like I said to you, I intend to procure uh, Lagos, uh, Badagri to Sokoto, and then link up this uh, coastal road to that. And then, of course, the existing uh, Transhara African Trace Route that is taking us to Cameroon is existing that's at Oguja axis. So this is phase two. Now, on that phase one, that is going to be procured in many sections. Now, the first section is section one, which I have at Velo Way to this seaport, and it's 47.47 kilometers. And I'm sure you're going to ask me the cost. The cost is 1.067 trillion. And uh, people who do not understand figures may tend to start, uh, you know, bothering themselves about uh, 1.067 trillion. If you want to know, you can divide this 1.67 trillion, divide it by 10 lanes, and divide it by 47.47 uh, kilometers. And then you will see how much is done per kilometer and compare it with what has been in existence, even when the economy was booming. And uh, uh, tech did not uh, accept it just like that. We debated it, we argued, we quarreled, you know, how can you give us, you know, a cause that was uh, given, you know, five years ago uh, to some of the uh, contractors. And uh, I insisted that this is not, you know, I didn't exist in that time, that I exist now, and I only do what is fair and just in line with the economic realities of uh, the renewed but, but the question so, is, uh, Minister, that is if that tallies with the global standard and the World Bank standard of construction of a kilometer of road, does that meet up with that standard, the costing? The, 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 you, you don't have uh, any uh, standard cost per kilometer, you know, uh, that they say this is the cost. You know, I set the cost, you know, in line with economic realities. I know what the cost of cement is. I know what Y20 rod costs. I know what Y16 costs. I know what sand filling costs per meter cubed. I know what the cement sand, you know, treatment costs. I put all these costs together, and that is my cost. And this cost is unique to uh, Nigeria, is unique to that particular project. But what I was trying to say is that they were similar projects. I don't want to mention companies and projects that are similar in nature, like this coastal road, which cost five years ago, uh, uh, you know, remain, you know, even higher than this. And uh, even there are some roads going on uh, before now that the cost is even higher than this coastal road. Don't forget that the coastal road construction is quite a very unique uh, uh, project. Uh, like this one has over 20 bridges, but we moved the bridges of section one to section two. We are presently procuring section two, and section two is running from uh, deep sea port, 55.5 uh, kilometers from deep sea port uh, down to the boundary between uh, Ugun and Ondo, and that is where section two stops. And Section 3 is being procured now. We are designing and redesigning. And uh, that is starting from the end of the project. And that's Cross River. And that's what we're doing. We are going to do into uh, Section 4, 5, 6. And uh, all these sections will be going on all at the same time. Anyone we procure will be, you know, uh, engaged independent of the other one. So, so are the funds readily available now? Do you have the funds? Have you paid ITEC? Yes, I paid high tech, as I should pay them. The so first are, section of, I should are, pay you, them. are you going to okay. construct the rail line alongside simultaneously with the construction of the road? Or the rail will come after the construction of the road? You know, uh, uh, Shewa must come in, Mr. President. Uh, he has shown every bit of his administration to be an infrastructure person. He's shown to be uh, an accountant is shown to be a divine president. He has put up what no man ever thought about. 
and that's the renewable infrastructure, uh, uh, you know, uh, front. And um, because when you want to even borrow money, and when people ask me uh, how with this project, I said, look, this project, I'll use the engineering uh, technology that it has a self leasing you know, mechanism. Uh, in hydraulics engineering, we call it self leasing velocity, which means that it has the capacity to pay, you know, for uh, uh, the cost of uh, the project. There are some roads that will not be able to pay for the cost of construction even in 50 years. And that's where the social security comes in. But this one is an investment, and um, through this uh, renewable infrastructure uh, uh, mechanism, I believe that uh, the investors are going to have very serious uh, confidence because sometimes you want to borrow money to invest, they ask you to pay certain counterpart funding. And uh, we cannot have it either through appropriation or any other mechanism. But through this mechanism that Mr. President Johnny has brought out, and I commend him very highly, and all those who work with him, like the Minister for Finance, uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, the electric brand, you know, that, you know, the FROS chairman, uh, the, uh, uh, the Minister for Budget, uh, the uh, CBN Governor, ESCC, and so on and so forth. So I commend them. They put this thing together. I, I wasn't part of it, but I'm going to be part of the implementation to ensure that it's the reality. So we are going to see hope. We are going to see you know, uh, the construction of the rail line going alongside with the construction of uh, this road, you know, all at the same time through this mechanism. Right. I'm very confident about that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that, um, you know, it is God that uh, revealed that to Mr. President. It does look like um, the Lagos Calabar Coast Expressway is getting so much attention and there's so much to talk about. Eh? I, I want to quickly move away from it because. If I stay on it, we'll, we'll spend the whole day talking about it. But uh, when you say that uh, it will bring some immediate benefit, uh, will it be told? Or how does the federal government think uh, some revenue will be generated from it? So, uh, through tolling and uh, through the engagement of the, uh, the uh, infrastructure that will be developed along uh, the corridors under PPP. So uh, a lot of uh, you know, land will be made available for investors. And they come in, you know, like I told you, tourism, you have industries, you have factories, you have, uh, you know, estates, and so many other kinds of infrastructure will develop along this corridor. It's quite unique, and I think it's the first in Africa. Uh, so there are a lot of benefits, and I'm going to be engaging uh, to discuss, you know, these benefits, to discuss uh, the progress uh, being made uh, along the line. It's uh, a whole year, it's a year project. All right. Oh, Quickly, let right. me ask you, there are those who have also raised eyebrows about some of the projects being uh, undertaken by this government. Uh, those who think uh, mo some of these projects are concentrated to the southern part of Nigeria. But you have also come out to say there is a spread. Uh, in all of this spread, if you can just highlight and some, in summary, give us where these uh, legacy projects are going to be in terms of road construction in the six geopolitical zones. Can you give us an uh, understanding of that? So let me first, uh, you know, say this. Uh, we must, as, uh, you know, people as a nation, begin to think about, uh, you know, national interest. And that's what Mr. President demonstrated. And that's what I'm following suit. When we came on board, we have this uh, NMTC tax credit, uh, and the total cost today is about 5.3 trillion. And of course, the spread. The spread is that you have the North Central, they have about 27% of it, North Central. You have uh, the uh, South, South, 27%. You have the Northwest, 14%. Uh, I can't remember all that, but the least is South is 3%, and Southwest, 4%. And people put up an argument. I say, look, your PIDF project. PIDF project is uh, Abuja Kano. Abuja Kano is 753 uh, kilometers. Uh, if you stretch it to one lane, but if it is double lane, it's uh, 375 kilometers. Uh, it's being done by Jilon Seja. Of late, they requested for 1.5 trillion review of the project. Uh, we are still battling on that. But the good thing is that Mr. President, uh, when we came on board, he didn't look at the spread, whether it is rightly done or wrongly done. He asked me to go ahead and review all the projects and they bring it to completion. 
So, and the, what was uh, paid as at the time we assumed that it was only 500 billion, which means that you have 4.8 you know, trillion. And uh, if you talk about spreads, you will find out that the spread was not there. But is there any reason behind that? And the MPC had to procure these, uh, you know, uh, projects along the line of uh, their business, you know, which are, what are those roads that would assist them to transport their petroleum product? Uh, it may not be 100% correct, but leadership is about, you know, uh, uh, correcting what is not uh, correct, and that's by building more roads. And we inherited 2,600 projects. And when people tell me that I have one trillion uh, budget, I said to the National Assembly, you have a palliative budget in Ministry of Works, because not up to 10 projects are 10 billion appropriated to it. And all the envelope I got, we had to use it to keep all the projects we inherited alive, so that when we find money, then we'll be able to you know, go ahead with these projects. That is number one. So number two, uh, you look at Abuja Kano uh, you know, projects, uh, we still have about 280 kilometers of the road to be completed. And uh, Mr. President has told me that you must complete this project within 12 to 14 months. That's a matching order he gave to me. You look at Abuja Lokoja, that's the first project I visited. And Abuja Lok uh, uh, Kaduna was the, the second project I visited when I assumed office. So uh, uh, I think Mr. President and I'm following suit is looking at the entire country as one. Because one road connects to the other, especially the from A roads. From A roads gets from one point of the region and it continues to the other points of the region. So the interest of Mr. President is how to interconnect all the states and all the regions together. And it doesn't matter which project. But at the same time, there is a very good spread. You look at uh, you know, uh, Abuja Kano that we are doing everything to complete. And I'm going to complete some of those uh, sections of the road in concrete. You know, and no matter what anybody does, it's going to be done. Uh, right. So that when you see the on uh, 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 you ask me for legacy projects of the president, you've not even asked me. I've not even said anything. You know, <laughs> you have the Burukum. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying projects are going on all over the country, and uh, some people are criticizing me, saying, "Look, you are from Southeast. I'm not, uh, you know, Minister of Southeast, but definitely." Southeast is in the record now, you know, and like the two bridges that uh, collapsed, uh, you know, um, in Ugu Portaco. Immediately, Mr. President said to go and they procure it. It's all going now. So there are quite a lot of, I think this uh, uh, present administration has honestly remembered Southeast, you know, but I'm not concentrating in Southeast alone. I am doing that which we inherited, and it doesn't matter where it is located. Mr. President said, and we complete all the projects. All right. So the is it, yeah. Is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, Minister, it is in Lagos that are allowed for us to anchor. Uh, and you've mentioned that there are issues with some bridges in Lagos. Two of them you highlighted. Uh, the Todd Milan Bridge, I'm, uh, I'm understanding now, with the smoothness of the road, one has to be very careful. And those who are saying maybe there's need to actually put some uh, kind of caution in terms of bombs and all other view, when is it going to be open? And what are you doing from some of these bridges you say in Lagos? that are problematic, unhealthy? Yeah, um, it's not just uh, Lagos uh, bridges that are uh, you know, needed to be checked. You know, I've checked the Mutala Mohammed Bridge in uh, Kogi State, and uh, we are arresting the, uh, the defects, you know, underwater defects. We are working on that and the expansion just. But let me mention critically two uh, bridges in Lagos that uh, we have uh, examined and that we need to pay good attention. And that's the Ten Mainland Bridge, 11.8 kilometers by eight lanes. And it's very critical. And when you talk about the total rehabilitation of the bridge, you talk about the deck. Mr. President has released money, and I can say that 99.9% .9 of the project is done. But what is uh, to be done is additional work, which is we are putting a uh, uh, solar light we are replacing the generator lights to solar lights. We are putting CCTV both on top of the bridge and under the bridge. Because the president told me that part of the problem we're having under the bridge is people that are doing illegal mining of the sand. And I agree with him, and I've seen it. They even go as far as, you know, destroying the concrete of uh, the pie caps, you know, uh, inside the water to anchor their small, small boats. 
and then in fact the National Assembly people saw it. So now the the top of the deck is uh, completed. Within the next uh, seven days, we're done with the landmarking. And uh, if, you, if we are not done with the landmarking, I will direct that the road be open, the bridge be open, and then we can uh, close, you know, maybe one or two Sundays and complete that. Uh, the, 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 the bridge works uh, in terms of the CCTV and the solar light will not disturb traffic. Now, when you go under the water, you know, under the deck, you will have three elements, you know, that needed rehabilitation. And that is the pier. The pier is what we call literally columns. And that is what is carrying the deck. And now you have, uh, you know, the, the, the pie cap. The pie cap is what aggregates all the pies together and then now takes on the column or the pier, as they call it. And so these two elements are in critical condition. And we have looked at it, we have, uh, you know, examined it. I went with the coordinating minister of the economy and he saw the urgency of it. And so we spoke with Mr. President and he gave us some funding, uh, even though it's 30% of the funds that were required. So the, uh, the top mainland bridge, part of it was built by Deja. So I All give right. it to them at 21 billion so that they can reach. Yes. And uh, this, but there is an aspect you need to know. And that is what is going on inside the water. And that's what we are, you know, uh, uh, you know, inspecting right now with Beja and I come from uh, Italy. And uh, when we are done, we let the public know All that right. we are on top of the whole thing, mm. not the same thing with the Qatar bridge. All right. Uh, Honorable Minister for Works, please, when next you come to Abuja after the Easter break, I will crave your indulgence to please, let's sit down. There is so much more on some of these projects that I will pra practically want, want us to walk through with Nigerians so that we can know exactly what yeah, this government is up to in terms of works. Thank you so much indeed for your time. I appreciate it. And I allow you to go enjoy your yes, Easter yes, celebration. Yes, Three hundred and thirty uh, palliative projects ongoing on, you know, costing about three hundred billion, which the president has released money all across the country. There's so much to talk about about please, infrastructure development. Please, when you, when you come back on. to Abuja, uh, if you, if you are clever in Dodgers, please come into the studio and let's have a lengthier conversation on this. Thank you so much indeed for your time, uh, Pastor thank Engineer you. Dave Umayi, Minister of Works. Thank you so much indeed. <laughs> <laughs>